So Nagenwin um, Student Services, it's a, well, we have an office in uh, in the college um, called Appowin. Okay. And it's kind of like, a, what, sorry, Appowin. Do you want to say what it means? Appowin. Appowin. I don't know if everybody has their own, but it's, in my language, it's uh, Appowin. That would be like a place to sit. Okay. Yeah. So it's really nice because it's like our offices are in here, but then it's a wide open space where there's couches and tables and um, food and access to computers. And um, So students come in and they can just hang out or they can work on their homework. Um, some of us, like I, I'm a teacher, so I can help with um, like questions, but English if they have them. We have elders who come in, um, so they, they would offer... Um, like if they wanted spiritual counseling they could meet with an elder but they also the elders also teach other things so Jerry Martin comes in and he'll teach he's teaching um, Christmas cards this week like painting watercolors mm -hmm. but the other elders do beading um, and then we have tutors and stuff so our job in here is like an indigenous student navigator and we're kind of like guidance counselors but also kind of like social workers so they can come for help with like any of their program concerns but we can also help them with anything that's blocking their success like outside of school because um, you need to be well in all of those areas to succeed sometimes so if you're having a hard time like with housing or daycare or any of that we'll we'll help the students um make sure that if we can't do it ourselves then we're going to make sure that they get to the right person or organization okay. to help them with that so it's kind of like you guys support them all around in their mm -hmm. their wellness Holistic, yeah okay all right. Um, so that's within Confederation College. So your your target group or like the age of your your audience that you're or I guess audience might be the wrong word, but the the target group that you're say, supporting it would be college students then. Yeah, exactly. And we have college students from like there's we have a 66 year old college student who comes in here, and then we also have you know like the 17 year old. Yeah. 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 So there's just a a uh, wide range and then we also have like it, it's uh, targeted to First Nation yeah but everybody's welcome to come use our services and like our services and resources like we have lots of international students that come in here too okay and then we also there's also lots of tours so we've been dealing with a lot of uh, elementary level and then high school like because like we have there's three of us Indigenous student navigators. So Alicia has the academic lead. Okay. Kristen has the cultural lead, and then me. I have the recruitment lead. Okay. So we're we're all kind of like doing like if I know. So sh um, Kristen organized the powwow just a couple weeks ago. So just like that, like. So, but in the college, we have lots of, uh, like, groups or teams. Yeah. So I'm supposed to be more involved with the recruitment um, meetings and groups. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. So you each have your specialties sort yeah. of thing. Then. There's just uh, one, I was just, I usually tell, because um, one day, it wasn't even busy, it was like this. Like, it wasn't really, like, we weren't really doing any programming that day. So I was recording, I was getting everybody to sign their first and last name, and I got about maybe 70 people. And I was gone maybe a couple hours during that time, too. And that was so we just... get about maybe 50 to 100 every single day. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's impressive. I would say like a degree of success is having those people keep coming back even when they're not students knowing that they can come here for help with those things um, and then having it be an open non-judgmental space so that when they're ready to come back to school um, we're here to help them get that's, that like reach that goal. <clears throat> that's great those are um, pretty pretty good sig signifiers of successful program I think I would say um, so what I, you guys might have already spoke to some of these so the next question is what is the aim of the program 
Confederation College has um, an indigenous learning outcomes kind of like mandate and so part of the mandate is for indigenous students to feel represented in the space so um, having a space that runs cultural programming and, and it's like a welcoming and indigenous space I think is part of that goal. Okay. Do you have anything to add? You guys spoke to a lot of the stuff that you that you do already yeah. in, in the program anyways and what you offer and, and things like that. So it's kind of, uh, you, you spoke to a lot of that already too, I think. And there's lots of um, workshops like there's from the community. They come and do informal presentations here. Like they'll have a slideshow and then whoever's around, because they're always busy, the students, they just come in and out. Okay. So, but then if they see it specifically on their calendar, then some of them will come and listen. We have like, we had one just for Can renting. Legal, yeah. Can we legal clinic came ID in and talk clinic. about yeah. tenancy rights? Okay. Just, just, um, what else was there? This oh, one. that Army, Canadian Army presentation was really good too. Okay. So just uh, stuff like that was, is really good for the students. Mm. So kind of like things to, to know about what's going on and what they like what other programs are out there to help them or what, what their rights are. Okay, cool. Um, again, you kind of spoke to this one. Please describe some of the different activities in the program that the participants are involved in. Um, you guys mentioned a few things already. Is there anything else that you want to add to that? Well, we did the... We've been making mittens, so that was really popular with a lot of them. So we offer it from like for like three, four hours during the day. But then we also <coughs> sure that they know that they can come in before or after because a lot of them might be in class. Um, just accommodating their schedule. We're just very, I don't know, flexible yeah. to them. Like we always make sure that they know that. So, mm -hmm. Another thing we have that it's not like a, it's a part of Naganoan um, services, but it's outside. So we have an outdoor learning area with a, um, a teepee and a fire pit and a, a little pavilion. So we use the fire pit um, for an opening fire ceremony and closing fire ceremony. But um, teachers can book this space, and so they, sometimes they'll book it and then they'll have their classes at, at the fire. Nice. Um, and then um, Carla is rolling out a new initiative next year so she's going to be teaching more land-based activities so when she goes home over the christmas break she's going to um, snare some rabbits and fish and then show everyone how to clean at least a, a little bit part of it like I, I wanted to like maybe show pictures of like um like preparing and actually setting the snare in the net then I could bring it here and I could at least, you know, show them part of how to prepare the animal and then how to, like, we don't really, we might try to get a kitchen space, but, like, upstairs somewhere, but, um, like, that's, that's what we're thinking about. That's what we want to do. Yeah. Very cool. That's cool. So you're, like, bringing, you know, land-based learning because into the college. Because they're very interested. Lots of people are... They haven't. They were never able to practice that. Like, mm -hmm. but in my area, it's still very common. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you, Where are you from? Um, Muskrata. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, do you find uh, other teachers using those spaces, or using your space, or using that outdoor space? Absolutely. Yeah. Like it's from other programs and quite stuff. Quite popular. I mean, nobody's booking it right now in the winter, but yeah, a lot of people want to use it. Cool. That's good to know. They always uh, there's there's always people here like teachers really want us to go present in their off in their classrooms too and sometimes like there's been issues where um, there's like a conflict in in the classroom so the teacher will send somebody down to get a smudge kit and like we can't smudge we have to we have to ask permission before we smudge so that the fire alarms get turned off but people are welcome to go outside um, and smudge eventually there's going to be a smudging room where at any time they can go but right now yeah so teachers do utilize the space and they contact us if they want to bring an elder in um, to their classroom so we'll help them
putting the word indigenous education in place that all other education is somehow colonial. And then within the center, then it would be through the colonial lens. Um, looking back to my education as in teacher's college, then I, I like the idea of the two, two eyes um, learning. So looking at education through an indigenous lens, but also through um, like maybe a scientific lens so that you come at it at both angles and then you see it uh, differently. But other than that, I don't know how to answer that. For me, I grew up on my trap line till I had to come up for high school when I was 13. And then I didn't even know English till I was six. So all those teachings from my family, and then and then they were always pushing me to finish school, like they supported me going to high school. And But I was alone, but then, then I went to college and I came to university. So it's, I, I always say that I did like a full circle and all I learned was what I learned in the beginning was what was very important to me, like, like in all my education, that's all I learned was what I already knew was important. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? ...themselves instead of the other way around for it to be effective. <clears throat> but it would be nice if, like one thing that we see a problem with is that from the funders, INAC hasn't given any more money to um, for, like communities for education. So while there are more and more um, young people wanting to go to school, it's the same amount of money from the very beginning. So it would be really nice if there was more money placed in, in those funds so that education was supported um, for everyone. And then sometimes to funders, have a little bit of like um, some funders kind of have a, like a control over students and, and I don't know if it's always a positive way like tracking and it, it's good to have tracking and and um, but it would be nice if funders supported their students a, a little bit more in depth um, like First Nations communities actually supported their students a little bit more because sometimes they come here and um, there's lot they're lost and then another thing is too having to move from your community to a place like thunder bay like yes we have all these services but sometimes it's a scary place so it would be really nice if if the whole community could support education in that way making the city safer having more initiatives like um so that people aren't afraid or um, vulnerable living in like poverty-stricken neighborhoods or